Fedor is someone who doesn't enjoy the spotlight, really. He's a bit of a recluse. He likes to spend time with his family and is content uh, being in a small town in, in Russia, and he doesn't really strive to uh, get a lot of the stardom and fame that, uh, you know, really accompanies being a, a, a known commodity in mixed martial arts. I understand you know, he's a calm guy. I mean, he sits home, he likes to uh, play chess. Uh, there's not a lot of action in Fedor's life, besides, of course, training and fighting. For the rest, he's very to himself and to his family. I think, I think family is very important to Fedor. It's something that he um, misses most when he's on the road. He wants to be with his children and his wife, and um, it's, uh, it's something I think that gives him peace. Family to Fedor, I would say, is uh, pretty much the number one thing, of course. That's why I think a fighter fights to support his family. And then if you do it as well as he does, well, then uh, he can support his family really well. Мне нравится ходить в храм, мне нравится общаться с родителями, быть на природе, ходить в баню. Все нравится. Very simple living. Very simple living. It's a, it's a mining town. So it's very, very simple. You know, his mother lives there, his family lives there. Когда Саша стал ходить, он его забирал с садика и тоже с собой водил на дзюдо. В школу пошел. Поэтому школу из год пришлось оставить, хотя он прекрасно рисует. А, ну, я вообще относительно хорошо учился, поэтому мне все предметы нравились. И математика нравилась, и литература, и биология. В 22-м училище на второй курс и первое полугодие его выставляют на конкурс электриков. Он всего полгода там проучился и занял первое место. Училище закончился отличием и досрочно, где-то на полгода. He's a very intelligent person. He's a very educated person. Um, he loves art. You know, he's very into culture. Um, so there's, there's many other sides to him as a person than just a fighter. Плюс, скажем так, я добился того, ради чего переходил сюда. Это what sets Fedor Emelianenko apart from other fighters is, first off, I think his attitude. Fedor's attitude is, is still the same, you know, even though he's on this huge win streak. Um, in, in my opinion, the best fighter in the world, he, he, he stayed true to his craft. He still lives in Staryosko, Russia, um, still has the same friends, still trains the same way. I think that really makes Fedor who he is. He doesn't like the spotlight. He would prefer to be in a small town in Russia, doing what he loves to do, though, fighting. Um, nothing fancy about his training. It's just down and dirty, and I think that he stayed so true to his roots that that sets him apart. A lot of the guys that I've seen elevate through the ranks of mixed martial arts fighting, once they get to a certain level, they change a lot of things. They kind of forget where they came from, and I think what sets Fedor apart the most is that he stayed true to his roots. В любом городе и России, и мира, но я люблю свой город. Я здесь вырос, у меня здесь родители, мои друзья здесь, мой спортзал здесь, в котором я тоже вырос, тренера. Поэтому зачем я должен менять все это на, скажем так, большие города, где мне неуютно, и ну, это не мое. Я люблю маленькие тихие города. Я люблю старый оскол. You don't have to change your surroundings. What is, what works for you works for you. And that, and living in Stereosco and training the way he trains works for Fedor. Obviously, he trains in gyms that, that are beat up. They're not fancy gyms. You know, there's no plasma screens and no fruit smoothie bars in the corner. I mean, he trains in gyms that are beat up, but it just shows, it shows hard work. And his coaches are, are guys that he's very close with. They're like it's like a family in, in Stereosco, Russia. They're running through the woods. They're swinging on like monkey bars. I mean, the, the training is so primitive, but it works. And that's what I think is so unique and important about Fedor. He doesn't change his regimen. It's the same wherever he goes. That's why he's just, he's just a true athlete. He loves to train. Uh, for him, it's not a job to train. It's, it's not something he has to push himself to do. Um, he loves to train. But the funny thing is, Fedor takes classes with the general public, and the first time I walked in, there's a 10-year-old kid jumping rope and running around the gym in the same class Fedor's in. He, he's that kind of guy that he doesn't think he's special very humble. He goes in there and does his workout. 
строить карьеру, и строить легенды, быть легендами. Я об этом совершенно не думаю. Ну а запомнить, наверное, нормальным человеком, обычным человеком. Most of his, well, probably all of his opponents, never will see that side of Fedor Emelianenko. The one that smiles beyond that ring smirk. The one that does normal things beyond the superhuman punishment he dishes out while doing his business in the ring. He is as mentally tough as he is physically strong, capable of waiting patiently for that blink of an eye moment to end it all. A submission, a knockout. Whatever he sees in that split second. Two perfect examples, his fights with Hung Man Choi and Andrei Arlovsky. Different styles from both fighters who thought they had their chance. So it seemed. Matt Lindlin, the last man to go in against Fedor, told us in Portland last week he thinks it's going to be a first round decision one way or the other for Fedor. Most everyone else picking it as Fedor shoots in on the big man. Takes him down. Fedor giving up about 130 pounds here. 237 to 366, Ken. That's a huge difference. I don't care who you are. And look at the arm of Choi. It engulfs the head of Ramili You can see the head difference, too, the size and the difference he has. Look at look how small Fedor looks underneath him as he doesn't. Choi's working with his little brother. I can't believe he got out of that. That was tight. I thought it was over. Look how tight that armbar was. Fedor perhaps a little impressed himself there by Choi. Showing some redness around the face. And you can see there the welts taking a couple of good licks from Short. He's trying to do a sambo trick, he can't do it because he's just so big. And Choi again on the top. See how patient he is on the back of the forehead. Every punch is huge. You know the pepper shots by Troy are going to be huge punches because of his size. And you can see this. Look at look at the mammoth fist here of Hong Man Choi. Again, Fedor going for it. That's it. He got it. He got it. He's got it. Fedor does it. It ain't Shut up. Fedor immediately go. Wow. Everyone can breathe a sigh of relief now because that was a little close one. You don't understand how big Choi is. If he could have got a couple punches off, this fight would have been done. This armbar, the extension on it, Fedor's completely locked out. For those of you that practice in jiu-jitsu, getting to this position is very difficult on a man your own size, let alone somebody of Hung Man Choi's size. Because look, once Fedor gets it in, his knee is by his head. He's already tapping, but he extends out. He's fully extended. You can see the elbow poking through the bottom of Fedor's torso. His arm is longer than Fedor's torso. It's really hard to, to submit a guy to that length. Fedor, I mean, it ain't go. Another victory.